Have you ever seen a visitor from beyond the farthest stars? A living, breathing, thinking, feeling, extraterrestrial? Yeah, of course you have, everyone has. Yeah, they're real into K-pop for some reason. I see them at BTS concerts all the time. One time, at one of these BTS concerts, I pulled one of these beings aside and inquired as to what it is exactly about K-pop that they love so much. And this being said, simply, they're not singing in Korean. Curious. But have you encountered a man in a black suit afterwards? A man asking you pointed questions about your encounter. A man who insists you stay silent on the subject of standing little green men. You haven't. Well, that is odd. Yes, they... They supposedly get around. The men in black have appeared at various points throughout the 20th and 21st century, questioning, and really, threatening, UFO witnesses. While the movies based on these men in black are campy popcorn movies, these supposedly real-life encounters are anything but fun. It doesn't matter what you saw. If you continue to share this story, then your story will meet a sudden end. Let's think about this. The United States government sends people after you, and they threaten to kill you if you share your story. They don't kill you, they threaten to kill you. Did the United States government send a harshly worded letter to Soleimani? Did we send an oddly threatening fruit basket to Osama bin Laden? Did the Rosenbergs get three strikes before they were fried alive in the electric chair? The United States government does not fire warning shots, particularly in the case of these hypothetical cases. It simply doesn't make sense. Uh, to threaten death is to lend credibility to these incredible stories. <laughs> You better shut the fuck up about them aliens, bitch. I heard you talking shit on the news. You saw some lights in the fucking sky, right? Big fucking deal. All right, we've all seen lights in the sky, and we shut the fuck up. Because you know who paves the fucking roads? That's us. So shut the fuck up. I'm the government man with the government place. I will fucking cut a bitch. Fucking. They gave me this government issue. I can use it several times before it breaks. Shut the fuck up. None of this alien nonsense. Oh, nice plant, bitch. Was this the best one in Walmart? No shit about them fucking aliens, all right? Some aliens showed up, and they abducted me. That's when the government guy showed up, and he threatened to kill me. Are you not worried he'll kill you now that you've told us about it and published her New York Times best-selling book, Aliens Are Real, One of Them Abducted Me, and the government is lying about him? Nope. <laughs> I know a bitch when I see one. And that little elf ginger, that little ginger elf cuck, that one? Yeah, no. <laughs> He's a bitch. The men in black myth fails on a basic level. If you believe these men in black to be government men doing UFO cover-ups. Dr. Hopkins did not encounter a government man. As a matter of fact, he didn't encounter a man at all. Herbert Hopkins was a medical doctor living in Maine who had taken an interest in a recent UFO sighting in the area. He had taken to interviewing the witnesses using hypnosis. As the investigation continued, Dr. Hopkins began to feel 
disturbed. These accounts were truly incredible, but at the same time, consistent. He was staying up late, far, far too late, trying to work out the details of this case that had been troubling him so. In 1976, Dr. Herbert Hopkins received a sudden phone call in the night. What was the exact date on which this phone call occurred? September 11th. Coincidence? Yes, but I'm a man on YouTube talking about the men in black, so... Fuck it. Al-Qaeda are all aliens. It's not a coincidence. It, I'm, not, I'm not the New York Times. Who cares? But who was on the other end of that line? None other than the vice president of the New Jersey UFO Research Organization. Asking Dr. Hopkins if he could stop by and they could discuss the details of this curious case. Dr. Hopkins agreed, happy to share the disquieting details of this case. Immediately following hanging up the phone, Dr. Hopkins went out to turn on his porch light. It had only been a, a minute at most, and yet the visitor was already there. The features of this visitor were... wrong. His ears were too small, as was his nose, and his lips were strangely thin, as well as a deep crimson color. He had no hair, no eyebrows, nor even eyelashes. Dr. Hopkins invited this man into his home, and they began to discuss the details of the case. Dr. Hopkins had not made his investigations public. And yet this stranger seemed to know the answer to every question before he asked them. With every answer Dr. Hopkins gave, the man in black would respond simply, Yes. That is the way I understand it. At a certain point, the man in black wiped his lips, only to reveal that his lips were painted on, hence the deep crimson red. His mouth was just a hole in his face. The stranger then pointed to Dr. Hopkins' shirt pocket and said, simply, you have two coins in that pocket. Hand them to me and watch the coins. And before Dr. Hopkins' very eyes, one of the coins dissipated into thin air. The stranger then asked Dr. Hopkins about a fellow UFO researcher by the name of Barney Hill. The stranger asked, Whatever happened to Mr. Hill? Dr. Hopkins replied that he wasn't quite sure. He didn't know him personally, but he'd heard that he died in some sort of accident. The stranger responded simply, No. He died because he knew too much. And with that thinly veiled threat, the stranger took his leave, and left Dr. Hopkins even more anxious than he was before. What world had Dr. Hopkins only began to scratch the surface of? It had become clear that an actual, honest-to-God, extraterrestrial had sat in his own home and threatened his life. There is, as I'm sure you've realized, no New Jersey UFO research organization. Nobody lives in New Jersey. Whoever this stranger was, he was not human. How did this stranger almost immediately appear at Dr. Hopkins' door following their phone call in a time before the existence of mobile phones? Why was his appearance so odd and his manner of speaking so stilted and unnatural? Was he a YouTuber? Or a being from another world? So, what is to be taken from Dr. Hopkins' peculiar encounter? Did it actually happen? There's no way to know for sure. I do think it would be hard to impersonate a human being. We express ourselves in a myriad of complex and 
nuanced ways that would, most likely, be lost on another intelligence trying to blend in among us. I mean, what do humans act like? A complex question. Impossible to answer easily. You're a long-haul trucker, driving through the American Southwest. On the side of a desolate desert road in the dead of night, you see a thin man. A tall, thin man. An impossibly tall, thin man. And when you stop to see if he needs help, you see he isn't a man. Merely an attempt at one. What do humans act like? A complex question, impossible to answer easily, but something has been asking that question in the American Southwest for decades. In my next curious case, I will discuss the hitchhiker that has been haunting the American Southwest.